season replays, the fantasy drafts, ultimate creative leagues, and what if the tournament? It's Coffee Cup Games with the coach DKM. Hey, 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 this is Coach DK. Uh, Happy New Year's for those of you who survived 2021. uh, It's now 2022, but we are doing a replay of the year 1900. We are all the way down to the league finals, the championships of both the American and the National League yesterday. In the last episode, we actually had the American League uh, game one. Chicago Invaders won in a dramatic fashion in a great game uh, against the Buffalo Bulls. But today we're going to be starting the National League where we have the number one Brooklyn Superbus going against the number three St. Louis Cardinals. So let's check it out. All right. So as you can tell, we have an interesting matchup here. We got this is uh, St. Louis, the three seed as mentioned, the number one Brooklyn Superbus. As you can see on the left hand side of St. Louis and on the far right hand side of uh, Brooklyn where the team ranked. Um, out of all 16 teams that were in the American in the National League, um, where they ranked during our year 1900 replay. So this is not based off of the original year 1900 stats, but off of the replay. You can see St. Louis, uh, definitely a good hitting team, struggled when it comes to uh, pitching and defense. Um, Cy Young was incredible. The rest of the pitching staff, eh, not so much. Uh, for Brooklyn, they were obviously very, very good in every category. Um you know, pitching was probably one of their weaker spots. weren't known for their power, though they did have some. Um, but I really think it's going to come down to, you know, just looking at this, Brooklyn has the defense, has the pitching. Um, very, very good hitting, good speed. Um, but St. Louis has pitched very, very well in the postseason. And of course, they always have the power, particularly with Mike Donlin, who led the major leagues in home runs and already in the postseason has five home runs. So uh, let's check out the pitchers for today. <coughs> um for St. Louis, obviously, they're going to be going with their Hall of Fame pitcher, their main man, Cy Young, the right-hander. He went 31-11 and in our replay, got three saves, a 2.54 ERA. Uh, in the postseason, he's not been quite as successful. He's only 1-0, and zero, so he's 1-1, one, one, hasn't lost any. Uh, he has a 4.28 ERA, and he started four games, so three of the games he did not earn a decision. Uh, in 27 innings pitched, he's actually allowed 36 hits, so not necessarily the best. Um, he did lead the major leagues in strikeouts during the regular season. Uh, he does have nine strikeouts in his 27 innings pitch. For Brooklyn, they will be going with their own Hall of Famer, Joe McGinnity. He went 21-13 and 13 with a 3.86 ERA. He was by far their number one starter. In the postseason, he has done very well. He is 3-0 and zero in four games started. And he has an impressive, I mean impressive 1.23 ERA. Uh, He's pitched 37 innings, he's allowed only 31 hits, and he also has struck out nine. So there's the uh, pitchers for today. And now let's check out our lineups. Uh, One of the things I did do for this series is I tried to include some of the stats during the postseason, so you will see the stats with their names on the field. Um, But for St. Louis, we have John McGraw, the third baseman. He's hitting 366. He's actually got a 536 on base percentage. He's playing third, and he'll be leading off. Keister, the second baseman, has uh, four triples with 10 RBIs in 347. He'll be batting second. Jesse Perquette, the left fielder, will be batting third. He has a 426. Wow. ERA and 14 RBIs. Uh, the man of the postseason for St. Louis has been Mike Donlin, the right fielder. He's obviously in the cleanup spot. He's hitting 364. He has five home runs, 18 RBIs and a 750 slugging percentage. Uh, Hedrick will be playing center. He is hitting 271 with five doubles. McGann, the first baseman hitting 256, will be batting six. Bobby Wallace struggling in the postseason, hitting only 217. The shortstop has one home run, though. Lou Krieger, the catcher, uh, will be uh, who's hit 268 and also has a home run. He's batting eighth. And then finally, Cy Young, the pitcher, will be batting ninth. And for Brooklyn, we will be Having left fielder Joe Kelly, Hall of Famer, lead off. He's hitting 351 during the postseason. Hugh Jennings will be moving all the way up to the number two spot. He's playing first base. Uh, he's hitting 429. He's been hot in the postseason. He has five stolen bases, also a 512 on base percentage. We Willie Keeler, one of the best hitters originally in the year 1900, as well is in our replay. 
and probably with uh, one of the best hitters in the postseason, he's hitting 462. And with that 462 average, only one extra base hit. So just a bunch of singles by Wee Willie Keeler. He does also have 13 RBIs. Fielder Jones will be playing center batting fourth. He's hitting 310. Deacon McGuire will be um, playing today as catcher. Now he only has a 091 average, but he only has 11 at bats. And we just felt like he would be a better option than Duke Farrell in this situation. He does a little bit better against right handers. So we decided to go with him. Um, Bill Dolan will be playing shortstop. He's hitting eek, 200. Uh, Daly hitting eek, 242. Um, and then Lave Cross is going to be getting the start, um, primarily because Jimmy Shepard, who we've been starting primarily, is a left-hander. Cy Young is better against left-handers. So we decided to go with Lave Cross. Uh, a, it helps our defense, and does, he's also a little bit better um, matchup for Cy Young. And then obviously pitching will be Joe McGinnity. But before we move on, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and now let's jump in to the action all right so we are at washington park two in brooklyn and now we go to the top of the first john mcgraw leading off he's hitting 366 he's going to lead off and he's a one to three for a home run he does not get it as he pulls the ball and keeler will be there against the wall one down here's keister hitting 347 he needs a one to four he gets the one so he's going to be on base they have good running. McGinney's a plus two. McGuire's a plus two. That's not going to help us. So they're going to take advantage of the steal. And Keister gets them the second easily. Here's Jesse Burkett hitting 426. They're going to try to steal third. And they do with two steals for Keister as McGuire uh, might not have been the best choice for catcher with his arm. Uh, Burkett is going to pop out the cross. That's going to be two down. And here's Donlin, the power hitter. He's going to hit a ground ball to pitcher. So that's going to end the inning. But they did have a runner on third on two stolen bases after the single. Now we go to the bottom of the first. Cy Young on the mound. Hall of Famer going against Joe Kelly, left fielder, Hall of Famer. So Hall of Fame matchup here. Kelly needs a one. He gets a 15. So he's going to get a single. Young's a plus one. Krieger's a zero. So that gives Kelly a 70% chance to steal if he gets a good lead. He does not, so it is 50%. We're not going to take a chance now. Hugh Jennings is up. He's hitting 429. And unfortunately, we probably should have tried to steal because it's a 6-4-3 double play. So here's Wee Will the Killer, the best hitter in the postseason. He's a 1-16. to He's going to get a 2. That'll be good enough for a triple. So a 2-out triple by Wee Will the Killer, only his second extra base hit of the postseason here's fielder jones and he's going to line out to end the inning so both teams get a runner on third with two outs and nothing comes out of it and now he jerks up against mckinney mckinney gets a strikeout <clears throat> mccann's up he's hitting 256 the first baseman's going to hit a ground ball to the mckinney who's going to fling it over to jennings for two away here's bobby wallace the hall of fame shortstop he is going to hit a fly ball in the opposite field keeler's there and that's going to be a 1-2-3 inning. Bottom of the second, here's McGuire. He's going to get a single. He's going to lead off. And now we got Dallin up. Dallin only hitting 200 in the postseason. Not a good bunner, not a good uh, option there. So we're going to let him swing away. He's going to line out. Now Daly's up. He's in a little bit better, but still dreadful at 242. But he needs a 1-5 to five for a triple. He's going to get a double. McGuire's going to end up on third. Daly's going to end up on second. Lave Cross is up. One away. Lave Cross, he needs a one. He gets a 17. That's going to be a single. That's going to score two runs. My man! As we, Brooklyn, jump up early. McGinnity's up. The pitcher. He's going to hit a ground ball to short. Wallace is going to throw it to second. They're not able to turn the double play. But they do get the easy out at second base. Two down. Here's top of the order. Kelly, he's going to hit. Ooh, ouch. Hit by a pitch. Cy Young obviously doesn't like the fact that uh, we scored. <laughs> Takes it out on Kelly. So Hugh Jennings is up. Jennings is going to hit a fly ball to center field. So we leave another runner on scoring position in both innings. But we do knock in two. So 2 nothing. We are leading. Now here comes St. Louis. Here's Krieger, the catcher, the number eight hitter. He's only hitting 268. He's going to pop out. That's going to be one away. Here's Cy Young. Cy Young ugh, needs a one for a triple. He gets a two, so lucky for us. 
And now John McGraw is up. McGraw, great at getting on base, drawing walks, getting hits. He does it again, draws a walk. He's on base. Here's Keister. He got a single his last at bat. He's going to get another single. It's going to go to the left field to Joe Kelly. They are not going to test his arm with Cy Young, the pitcher. So bases are lewd for Jesse Burkett. He's going to hit a ground ball to Hall of Famer, Hugh Jennings, who needs to make a play. And it looks like it does. They get the easy out at first, but one run does score. <laughs> So, what apparently happened there, line shot, it hits the pitcher, rolls over to first, and they end up getting out. And now McDonald's up, the power hitter with runners on second third, and he's going to pop out. Whew, lucky us, we uh, get out of that one. So, bases were loaded with one out. We get a uh, ground ball off the pitcher to the first baseman, who then takes it easy out at first. But they do score at one run, but leave runners stranded on second and third. Wee Willie Keeler's up, bottom of the third. He tripled his last at bat. He's going to hit a ground ball to Keister, who's absolutely dreadful at second. And that's going to be another hit for Keeler, but he advances on the air to second. Here's Fielder Jones. Fielder Jones hitting 300 during the postseason. We'll let him hit away. I was thinking about trying to uh, oh, bunt. He needs a 1-11 to for a double to score Keeler, but unfortunately, it's an 18. That's going to be one down. Here's Deacon McGuire. He's one for one. He's going to hit a ground ball to Keister, opposite side. So Keister's going to fling it over to McGann at first. For that out, Keeler goes to third. So runner on third again. Another runner in scoring position with two outs. And again, we leave a runner stranded in scoring position as Dallin grounds out the second. And that'll be the third out. Top of the fourth. Hedrick is up. He's 0 for 1. He's going to get a single this time. See, 265 in the postseason. They're going to try to see what they can do here. They're trying to hit and run. And we just get the out at first. So Hedrick goes to second. Here's Bobby Wallace. He's hitting 213. The Hall of Famer has struggling in the postseason. He gets a fly ball to right field. Hedrick is not going to try to advance the third. Krieger's up the catcher. Krieger's going to hit a ground ball to short, and that's going to be an out. So, it seems like runners being stranded is the story of this game. <coughs> Excuse me. Bottom of the fourth, here's a daily. He's one for one. He had a double the last time. This time, he's going to get another hit. This time, it's going to be a single, so he's on base early. We're going to try to see if we can get a stole steal here. Not able to. Lave Cross is up. We're going to let him swing away. He's one for one. He had a single the last time. It scored in two runs. We're going to send Daly to third. Cross now on second. Cross looks like an 80%. Make sure he doesn't have any pickoff chances. He does not. So he's got great speed over there. We're going to do a delayed steal. They're not even going to test it. So now McGinney is up. Infield is in. There's zero outs. Runners on second and third. McKinney, we're going to let him hit. He's going to pop out the short. I was thinking about suicide squeeze there. Decided against it. And the main reason is because we got three Hall of Famers coming up. Here's the first one. Our leadoff man, Joe Kelly. He's got on base with a single and then got on base being hit by a pitch. Trying to take advantage of this. He's going to hit a ground ball to Keister, who's absolutely horrible. <laughs> Makes a play at home with the infield being in Keister. Not known for his defense. Makes a great defensive play there. Eesh. We are going to attempt a steal again. They're not going to test it. So, runners on second and third. Two outs here. Hugh Jennings. He's going to line out. You're killing me, Smalls! All right, now back to the action. That was disappointing. So, here we go, top of the fifth. McKinney is still on the mound. He's going to go against his opposing pitcher, Young, who's going to line out the first, so that'll be one away. Here's John McGraw. He's 0-for-1 with a walk. He's going to hit a ground ball to the second baseman, and that's going to be two down. Here's Keister. He's 2-for-2 two two with two singles. He is going to fly out the left field. So this will be a 1-2-3 inning as Kelly, the left fielder, brings that one in. 
Bottom of the fifth. Here we go. We Willie Killer. He is two for two with a single and a triple. And he is going to need a one to ten. He gets a two. So he gets a double. So he is a home run short of the cycle. No outs. Fielder Jones is up. He's hitting 290. We're going to try to bunt here. And he gets on base as they have another air as McGann throws the ball away. So Jones is safe. Keeler safe. Runners on the corner. Here's Deacon McGuire, who's one for two, the catcher that we brought in. And he's going to be strikeout. Oy. All right. So one down. Here's Dolan. The shortstop hitting 189, and he's going to draw a walk, and that's a good thing. And now we have Daly, our second baseman. He has a double and a single. Cy Young facing some serious uh, challenge here. And Daly's going to hit a fly ball opposite field to Jesse Burkett, who does not have the best arm. Keeler is going to be able to score easily on the sacrifice fly. Yahoo! So we get another run. Here's Lave Cross. He's two for two with two RBIs. And he's going to hit a ground ball to short. That's going to end the inning. But we do add another run as we now lead three to one. Here's Jesse Burkett going against McKennedy. He needs a one to 16 and he gets a four. Yoosh, that'll be the second, I believe, the second triple. I'm not really sure. I missed it, I think. But now here comes Mike Donlin, the power hitter. Good thing is, is that we are playing in Washington Park. So the field is not the best, but it doesn't matter as Mike Donlin needs a one to seven and he rips the ball to deep right center field. A two run shot, tying the game three to three. His sixth home run of the postseason. Here's Hedrick, the center fielder. He's hitting 280. He's going to draw a walk. There's still nobody out in the top of the sixth. McGann's going to rip a single. That's going to put runners on the corners. And now they have runners on second and third. Wallace, though a Hall of Famer, hit 268 originally in 1900, hit 208 in the postseason. He's going to hit a ground ball to first base with the infield in. So Jennings is able to keep the runners where they are as he tags first base. So one down. Here's Krieger. He's hitting 256 in the postseason. He's 0 for 2 today. And no! He just stole our lunch. As Krieger gets a two run single. Or two RBI single. And now St. Louis is going to bring in a pinch hitter. They bring in Otto Kruger, who has three at bats and yet to get a hit in the postseason. He needs a one to seven, of course. The way this inning is going, he's going to get his single. We're going to throw for the run, the lead. <laughs> So Fielder Jones apparently threw the ball away trying to get the lead runner. Kruger now on second. And McCrawl now is up. He's going to hit a fly ball to right field. And it's caught. Golf clap, please. Um, that's two outs. Here's Keister. Inning still going on. And he's going to be strikeout. As McGinnity gets out of the inning, but unfortunately, it is now six to three. As Donlin with his two-run home run, and then a couple of air and air and a couple of mishaps. It is now six to three. All right, so bottom of the six. Try to see if we can bounce back from that top half of the inning. Here we go with McGinnity, the pitcher. We're gonna let him hit, even though we know he just gave up. Five runs. He's going to hit a fly ball to left field. 
it's going to be to Burkett. Burkett making a play, and he's got it. So here's Joe Kelly, top of the order. He's one for two. He's been on base all three times with a hit by pitch and a fielder's choice. But this time he is going to be sent back to the dugout as he flies out the center. Here's Hugh Jennings. We moved him up because he's been hitting well in the postseason. And today he is now, after that line out, 0 for 4. So 1, 2, 3, top of the 7th. McGinnity still on the mound going against Burkett. Burkett needs a 1 to 7. He gets a 7. So he's going to lead off with a single. Now here comes Donlin. And Donlin, ew, boy, he needed... I think it was a 1-4, to four and he got an 8, so he gets a single. So now runners on first and second, no outs. And Donlin's going to steal. We're going to hold on to the ball, give him second. Infield is in. He tricks up. We're going to walk him to load the bases, hoping for some force outs here. Here's McGann. McGann is going to be hit by the pitch. Come on. Man. So base is still loaded. Zero outs. Here's Wallace. He's going to hit a fly ball to left field. Kelly has a minus one arm. Donlin has some speed. We're just going to stop the other runners from advancing. They're going to get another run. Here's Krieger. They're going to try to steal here with Hedrick. And he takes second. Or excuse me, takes third. And McGann takes second, stealing behind him. Krager's up, one out. We're going to pitch to him. He's going to hit a ground ball to third base. And we're going to get the out at first, keeping the runners where they are. Now Thomas, the pitcher, is up. They're going to let him pitch, ironically. So they're going to get the ground out. But with a five-run lead, I'm not sure if that was a bad decision. When did the Bleacher Bums make their official debut? 1983. 1969, I wasn't even close. That's so our Chicago fans, or excuse me, Cub fans. Um, all right, so bottom of the seventh, he's a wee willy killer. He needs a home run to get the cycle, and we could definitely use some sort. And he needs a one to four. Wow, that was almost exciting. Um, but he gets an 11, so that's going to be a fly out left field. One down, here's Fielder Jones. Fielder Jones needs a one to seven. He gets a four, so he's going to be on base. And now here's Deacon McGuire. And the ball bounces away from Krieger, the catcher, at the wild pitch. So Jones takes second. We have a runner and scoring pitcher. And now it's a pass ball. So Jones goes all the way to third. We might be able to get a run back here, but we definitely are going to need more than that. Krieger needs a one. He gets a seven, but it is going to be a single. So we do score a run after the wild, the wild pitch and the pass ball. So get a run back here. We're still one out. Here's uh, Bill Dolan. He's going to hit a fly ball to right field. That's going to be two away. And now Daly, the second baseman's up. He's two for two. And he's going to draw a walk. So runners on first and second. Lave Cross, who's two for three, a guy that we decided to put in today, has two RBIs. We definitely need him to get on base. And he's going to pop out Go! to end the inning and end a potential rally. Top of the eighth. Top of the order for St. Louis as they lead 8-4. to four. John McGraw not having the best game. He's 0-3. He does get a walk. He's a 1-7. He gets a 12. So he's going to be out. Here's Keister. He's 2-4. for four. He's going to line out. And so now comes Jesse Burkett. He has a triple and a single. He's going to draw a walk. But with two outs, um, we'll see what happens. And here comes Burkett. He's going to try to steal. He's in scoring position with Donlin, the power hitter up. Donlin is going to hit a ground ball to the pitcher, and that's going to end the inning. So bottom of the eighth, we have six outs left. We need four runs. We are definitely going to bring in a pinch hitter. All right, so we brought in Jimmy Shecker, who normally starts for us. Uh, he's going to be coming in the left-hander. He's hitting 273. He has six RBIs. He's drawn nine walks. Let's see if he can get on base for us here. He's going to draw, or excuse me, hit a single to the opposite field. So he's now on first. And now we're at the top of the order with Hall of Famers. Three Hall of Famers coming to bat. Here's Joe Kelly. He's one for three. He needs a one to 14. 
but because he doesn't have the power, ugh, it's just a single, again, stratomatic. You need to change that. If a guide is weak on power and has speed, it needs to be like a guaranteed double with a chance for a triple. Um, you don't take away the the home run and give them a single when the second option is a double. It just it makes no sense to me. Something I would change for what it's worth. Anyways, runners on first and third, no outs. Here's Hugh Jennings. He's zero for four today. Definitely need him to get a hit. He Ooh, does. He needs a one to six for a triple. That's going to score two runs. We're right back in it now. Eight to six. As Jennings is on third. And we Willie Keeler's up with zero outs. We Willie Keeler needs a home run for the cycle. He's not going to get the home run. He's going to hit a ground ball to Wallace. Who's a pretty good uh, player. A defender. Wallace is going to get the out at first, but Jennings scores. Brilliant! Which now makes the game 8-7. One away. Here's Fielder Jones. He's one for three. He's going to hit a double down the line. Burkett chases it. We're going to try to send Jones the third, and he gets there as he beats Burkett's arm a plus two. Yeah, so boy! A runner on third base. Here's Deacon McGuire. He's two for four. The infield's in. One away. And McGuire is going to hit a deep fly ball into the gap. And that's going to score McGuire as, or excuse me, it's going to score Fielder Jones as McGuire now is on second. Game is suddenly tied. Man, another great comeback. Dolan, here we go. He is 0 for 3 with a walk. He's hitting only 184, but he does draw a walk here. So that's going to bring up Daly. He's 2 for 2 today. He has a double, a single, a sacrifice fly, and has drawn a walk. So a good person to have it on, uh, at the plate here. Daly is going to hit a 5-4-3 uh, <gasps> inning-ending double play, but... We do get four runs in the bottom of the eighth to tie the game. Now we need to figure out who's going to come in and uh, pitch. All right, so we enter the top of the ninth. We're going to bring in Harry Howe, the right-hander. Um, but a great comeback to tie the game. So let's see if Harry Howe can put down the Cardinals and give us a chance in the bottom of the ninth to win this. Hedrick going to lead off. He is one for two. He's been walked and got an intentional walk, and he gets a second hit of the game. He's now on base. They're going to try to see if they can get a lead. They do not. They're still going to send him. Denied. And he's going to be thrown out at second. Nice. Um, again, now up, left-hander. He is one for three with an RBI. He's been also hit by a pitch. He's going to line out. That's going to be two away. So Deacon McGuire, the catcher. Even though he has a plus two, still able to throw out the leadoff man who gets on base. And now it's going to be Bobby Wallace, who's over three. And he's going to be over four. He's going to ground us a one, two, three innings. Hal does his job, giving us a chance. We brought Hal in um, for Daly, who had just uh, gotten that 5 4 3 double play in the last inning. We did that because he was the last batter, and we want to keep sh uh, Jimmy Shepard in. So, Lave cross up. He's two for four. See if he can get on base for us. He is not as he is a fly ball to Donovan in the right field. That's going to be one away. Here's Jimmy Shepard. He's one for one. He scored a run. He is going to hit a double off the pitcher's card. So he's going to be on second as now we get at the top of the order. Joe Kelly, two for four. Only one time has he not gotten on base. So hoping for him to pull something out of here. He's going to hit a ground ball to McCann at first base. McCann's going to have to make a play. He does as he makes the cat, uh, the, fields the ground ball, throws it to Thomas at first. Sheckard is able to take third. So, runner on third, Hugh Jennings up to bat. Can Jennings be able to make the game winner? He's going to hit a ground ball to Bobby Wallace at short. Bobby Wallace is going to have to make a play, and he does a great defensive play by Bobby Wallace, the Hall of Famer. 
to end the inning and send us into extra innings. Hal now up going against Krieger. Krieger is going to hit a ground ball to Joe Kelly. Whoopsies! Ugh. And that's going to be a single. And then an air. So Krieger now on second. Here's Thomas, the pitcher. Sure, they're going to bring somebody in. Here's Patsy Donovan. Patsy Donovan has nine at bats. He's gotten three hits in the postseason. He's going to hit a fly ball to left field. That's going to be one away. And that's going to bring the top of the order. Uh, John McGraw, who is zero for four with a walk. He's going to draw a walk. I tell you what, McGraw does like to get on base. As we saw in the pregame when we looked at the lineups, he had over 500 on base percentage. Here's Keister now. He's two for five. They're going to try to steal. And again, <laughs> Got he. McGuire throws out a runner. And so there's going to be two outs. McGraw is on base. Keister's up. We'd rather play face him, even though it's in 352, than either Jesse Burkett or Mike Donlin. And Keister, who is two for five today, is going to fly out to the left field. So McGuire, the second time in a row, throws out a, um, a runner trying to steal. So we go into the bottom of the 10th. Here's Wee Willie Keeler. He is three for five with a triple. And he's going to get his fourth hit as he gets a single. We're going to try to see. We haven't tried a lot of stolen bases here as they've had some good guys keeping us on. And Denied. Probably not the best decision. We had a 60% chance. I went with the odds. Unfortunately, we got a 15. So he's going to be thrown out a second. Here's Fielder Jones. He's two for four. He's going to hit a ground ball to Bobby Wallace, who made a great play at the end of the last inning. And Wallace makes another great play, just getting him out by a step. Here's McGuire. He's three for five. He's going to hit a ground ball to second base to Keister. And Keister's going to make a play. We enter now the 11th inning. Here's Jesse Burkett. He's two for four. He's going to hit a ground ball to second base, and that's going to be one down. Here's Mike Donlin, the power hitter. He's going to hit a ground ball to first. That's going to be two away. Now Hedrick is up, and he's going to hit a ground ball. So one, two, three inning. I tell you what, uh, Hal has come in and done a fantastic job. But McGuire has definitely, the catcher, been helping him. So bottom of the 11th, here's Bill Dolan, the shortstop. He is 0 for 3 with two walks. He's going to get his third walk of the game. He is now on base. We are going to bring in a pinch hitter for Harry Howe. All right, so we bring in Duke Farrell, our normal starting catcher. So Duke Farrell's up. He's hitting 207 in the postseason and 29 at bats, and he has one extra base hit. But he's probably our best option unless we go with uh, crazy Doc Casey, who only had three at bats during the regular season. I think had like two hits or something like that. So his card is just on steroids. And I just don't feel out of integrity. You can use a guy like that. But anyways, here's Duke Farrell. He is going to step in and get a single. We're going to send Dolan to third. They're going to play the third. Brilliant! And he is going to be safe. Easily beats the throw. That puts Farrell and Dolan on second and third. The infield is in. The outfield is in. There is zero outs. Runners on second and third. Lave cross, two for five. Already has two RBIs. And he's going to be strike. All right, one away. Here's Jimmy Shackard. A chance to be the hero. Yeah, boy! And he does as he hits a ball over first base. And it's going to land in front of Donlin as he rips a single. And Brooklyn wins in the 11th inning, 9 to 8. 9 to 8. Another great game one matchup. Wow, two back-to-back -back amazing games. So, two amazing games. Chicago uh, comes back from behind in the ninth inning, bottom of the ninth, to win their first game. And then that happened in the American League. And then in the National League, Brooklyn comes back in the bottom of the eighth and then wins it in the 11th. 
So both number one seeds uh, win at home barely. Uh, as always, this is Coach TK. Hope you have a good one. Thanks. Bye.